I'm really pleased with the album. I mean, I'm really, really happy with it. I mean, I think it's it's very different to the last album, which is nice because you know you'd obviously you don't want to be repeating yourself. I think it still sounds very much like Maiden because it's what we are. You know, that is it. We don't make apologies for anything. We are what we are, and we do what we do. Virtual Eleven is a really positive, confident, strong album. Do you believe what you feel? Can you believe what you see? Do you believe what you feel? Can you believe what is real? Future real? 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 The actual title of the album um, is Virtue Eleven. It's our 11th studio album, um, and basically when we were on tour last time round, there were so many like West Ham skulls in the audience all over the world and stuff like that, and also people people in like Brazil and Argentina were giving me football shirts, and well, all of us really, but and I, in Brazil I wore the Brazil football shirt on stage, and Argentina wore the Argentina one and stuff, and um, it just gave me the idea to, you know, 11th album, virtual, you know, I love football anyway, Every, all the fans know that we've always been associated with football a lot and we just thought it'd be great to actually tie the whole thing in and um, you know basically my two loves is music and football so it's like you know tying the whole thing in and uh, it, you know I think it's really worked well. Well Virtual Eleven is uh, definitely a progression from The X Factor with uh, The X Factor we took a long time to record it and it was quite a long album with a lot of songs on and um, I think there was a lot of expectation attached to that. We were learning how to work together and all of that as well. And we hadn't toured, I hadn't done a gig with Maiden, I hadn't played live with the band. And so I think what's happened is doing the X Factor, recording that whole album, it was very successful. Then doing a whole world tour and all of that. Now coming back to the studio, there's a lot of confidence in the band. Everybody feels really positive. There's a lot of creative energy. And you can really tell on this album, you know, it feels a lot more positive. Roll up the dice, take a spin of the wheel. Out of your hands now, so how do you feel? But you're not gonna win. You better go back again. Do you feel lucky or do you feel scared? Take one of my friends, every devil may care, but you're down on your luck. What will the next day bring? I drift down the ocean. I float in a daydream. I'm lost in a maze. I'm blind in the haze. So what does it matter? So why don't you answer? So why did you say? It's always a, a pleasure to work um, at Harry's house. The only thing is, he only has to get out of bed in the morning, walk down the stairs into the studio. We've got to drive through the traffic, boys and girls. <laughs> no, it's been great. Um, we recorded the back tracks. Well, I, I, you know, my piece of work was done, started in June last year and ended in June last year. <laughs> <laughs> so once I've done my bit, I'm off out. It ties in with the past and the future because it's kind of... It ties in with the virtual reality kind of thing. And on the album cover, I think there's a guy on there with the, the virtual helmet on. So it kind of links the past to the present and to the future. There's that leap that I think people are making now. If you talk about computers and things, everything changes within, you know, within a month. And I think we're trying to keep right on the edge of the, the, the technical equipment we have here, but we're trying to keep that real live feel and real live essence to what we do. A lot of the vocals that we've kept for the album itself were the rough vocals that I recorded when we were all playing together as a band right at the start of the recording and I found in my vocal sessions what I was trying to do was trying to get a bit better than that but it had such a good vibe which is what we always look for in recording that uh, it worked really well. I'm very, very excited. I'm ecstatic about, uh, about the way the album sounds. Um, but Blaze's vocals are just, it's phenomenal. I mean, I really am excited about this album. I mean, we always are, aren't we, when you get yeah. a new one, but there's something special about this album. 
and um, maybe it's because it's virtual 11, who knows? It's, it, it could be the lucky number or whatever. This time round, um, the songs just felt a bit more raw, a bit more on the up, if you like, for want of a better phrase, and you sort of take them in that direction. I mean, whatever batch of songs we've got at the time, we just tend to, you know, go with the flow and, and do what's right for that, you know? There's not that many overdubs on it, so it's not an overproduced album. We're trying to keep the live feel to it as much as possible. So yeah, that was the plan, to try and keep that, the essence of what the band's all about on the album. A great thing about producing is that, in the sense that, um, and, and also I, I suppose because I do write a lot of the songs, is that you can see your song right from the, you know, the sort of incarnation or whatever, right through to the end. And, um, you know, so there's a lot of satisfaction in that. Um, and knowing, I suppose, if you have a pretty strong mind in the sense I pretty much know what I want to do and, and uh, with a song. And um, also, what's good about it is that obviously at later stages, you know, if you get a basic idea, you think, oh, that's dropping down a little bit there, could do something else in there. You can actually read out the time to actually, you know, think, okay, we'll put a little bit more guitar or a bit of keyboards or what, or army vocal or whatever. He understands a lot about my voice and about me as a person, so he knows how to get the performance out of me. He also understands the capabilities of my voice, so if he knows that I can achieve something, he doesn't let it go, or he tries to find a way to get me to do what he wants on the record or in the recording. And so it's been really, really good because it's been great for me to work closely with him, especially on some of the songs that he's written. I am the man's man. Because the way he phrases the lyrics and the vocals and the melodies that he chooses, it's a place where I wouldn't normally use my voice and it's a really satisfying place as well for me to sing on songs like The Klansman where I get to do an absolutely dynamic performance from softly spoken to really shouting and screaming to melodic singing back to being really soft and everything. It's absolutely great. Yeah, this is the basic uh, the album cover. Uh, virtual 11. You see the symbol for virtual 11 here. And what it is is that uh, you've got a kid playing a virtual uh, reality game here. He's playing a virtual reality football game, which is over here. And then, of course, Eddie's got his hand coming in around the back, so the kid doesn't know what's going on. He doesn't know what's kind of like uh, what we, <laughs> what's going to happen in a second, I suppose. And this is the, the centre spread of the CD. So this is the virtual 11 team, if you like. And uh, you've got Stuart Pearce, Tino Spear, Gaza, Ian Wright, Mark Overmars and Patrick Vieira, and they're all world-class international players, and we're not, basically. Yeah, when I was like 14, I was on West Ham's books, you know, for about nine months training there and all that. So, um, yeah, I suppose, I mean, I think every kid, like my, my son now, he's only seven, but he says he wants to be a professional footballer. I think all kids do, you know, when it's that sort of age. Great strike from Iron Maiden, Steve Harris, for the Blur team who hold the lead here at the Music Industry Soccer Six. The bass player is right on song. Thumping drive just inside the halfway line. Damon Orman, great quick throw, a chance here and a goal, and it's from Steve Harris. It's 3-1, and Blur must feel they're going to win this one. Damon congratulates Steve Harris. Oh, there's another opening here, and that is hat-trick. Steve Harris has scored his third goal of the game, and Fleur have won the final. And there's Steve Harris, the hat-trick hero, with the trophy. Basically, we've had a lot of fun with this album, you know, just the whole concept of the thing. I mean, this is my, you know, my favourite, personally, obviously, for you know, obvious reasons. I just love football, you know, and uh, to have the ultimate thing of being able to go and do promotion, you know, playing football games, is the ultimate for me. Um, it's based around playing, you know, five or six 
uh, major uh, cities and playing against uh, teams there, you know. And we'll have a couple of ex-pros playing for us. And like people like Terry Butcher and Paul Mariner are actually, you know, big fans of the band. And Terry Butcher always used to come and see us when he was at Ipswich and then when he went, went to play for Glasgow Rangers, you know, he'd always come to the shows. And uh, Paul Mariner also, you know, used to come to all different shows and everything. And um, they were really pleased to be asked to come and do this. And, and yet we sort of feel almost like we're not worthy, but they thought, I think they feel the same. It's not our work or anything, is it, going and playing, a, you know, a football match and doing all the press are based around that because it's, as I say, it's two of the biggest loves of my life is music and football. So uh, to be able to do both is fantastic. Yeah, my team is Hartlepool United. And I, yeah, any any good game I like, but yeah, I'm from Hartlepool, so I kind of support those lower end teams. Well, we're absolutely yeah. deadly behind the ball, <laughs> aren't we? <Dave? laughs> <laughs> <laughs> we only last five minutes, but when that's five minutes, we can kill them. Uh, <laughs> Everyone keeps asking me what we're doing on the PR tour, and I say, oh, we're going to go out, we're going to play football, then we're going to have a little party afterwards. And no one can believe it, all these other bands are going to hate. What a great idea! So, and also with the, it ties in with the, you know, the World Cup and everything. So there's that buzz about the World Cup over there. I mean, we look a good football team. I hope we can play as well as we look. You know. <laughs> This time, when I was recording Virtual Eleven, I could really feel how the songs would go down and I was thinking, oh, this is going to be a great bit, the crowd are going to really enjoy this bit, we can get everybody clapping here and people will be singing along to this bit. And it really put the picture, so I really felt like I was doing the recording much more as an excuse to go out and play on tour, you know, rather than a record in its own right. I thought, this is great, these songs are going to work really well live and I really had that vibe because of the experience of touring. So I think, yeah, it's got to affect, it's certainly affected the way that I write and the way that I approach writing. Yeah, it's always fun when you go in the studio because you, you, know, you put lots of ideas together and you see them come to fruition. So doing a studio album is always fun, but there's nothing like playing live. That's where I think the essence of this band is at. I'm very much looking forward to it. I mean, obviously I've been in the studio for a long time, so I'm sort of like, you know, breaking out of the chains now, basically, to uh, to get out there and do it. And uh, I'm looking forward, we've got a couple of weeks of rehearsal in April, and then after that we'll be going out and touring, you know, doing a world tour. I think we're starting in Europe, I think the first couple of gigs will be in France, going to Italy and, and um, all other places around Europe. And uh, then I think we got to South America, America, Japan, and uh, Australasia and all that kind of areas. And um, so it should take us right up to the end of the year at least. I'm looking forward to the tour a lot more than the last one because I've got no, I've got no barriers to break down and I seem a, a lot less obstacles. I feel really confident after the last tour, very confident in the new album. And I, I'm, I've had so much support and encouragement from all the fans around the world in all the countries we've visited. I'm looking forward to going back. For my personal fear, I think it's pretty much the same for everyone else. It's where we live. I mean, that's where I come alive and, and in live performances. I love making albums, but uh, there's there's nothing that can beat walking out on stage, getting behind them with the guys and, and, and playing our music. And uh, I'm, I mean, it's always the same. You know, a couple of years go by till the next tour, and it you know, like since the last one, the time you make the album, get it all ready. And uh, I'm kind of. Get nervous. I don't know about you, Dave. I've sort of said, and I'll still cut it. Oh, no. <laughs> you know, and all this kind of nerves come into it. But I'm very excited. And I can't wait to get out and, and take, especially this new, the new material from this album out on the road. Yeah, I mean, it gets diff more difficult as far as choosing songs as well for each tour because now this is the 11th album, so we have a vast you know, majority of material to choose from. So you have to just you know, tr try and pick out the best tracks that will work live, ones we love playing, ones we think the fans would love to, you know, listen to. But um, some of these tracks on this album are really geared towards a live performance, and there's some tracks like, I can see, like The Clansman, for instance, it's going to be like a major live um, yeah. track, yeah. yeah and definitely. so, yeah, it's so nice to do, do new songs, and also with the new stage production and everything. And, um, it's kind of fresh, you know, in 98, so it's fresh, you know. New songs, new tour. Are we ready? Mm. I think the Angel on the Gamble will be a very good video because graphically, the uh, images from the game and other things that we've come up with are going to make it different to a lot of the other videos that are out there. The technology that they're using 
for this is, uh, doesn't exist anywhere else. It's totally new and there is more processing power that, and uh, more ability in the technology to move around shapes and things like that than there was used on the Jurassic Park movie. On the photos for, the, for some of the album stuff, we get to have a, a green screen behind us. Um, and the photos themselves, just with the green screen, look good anyway. Um, but that doing the green screen stuff and also shooting, shooting the video with a green screen behind you means that they can then uh, superimpose all the virtual reality stuff behind you or around you. It was a very long shoot. We did about 16 different run-throughs the song, really trying to put everything that we could into it. And then we had a load of stuff to do afterwards where we were playing cards and walking around in a bar and stuff like that. You know, a bar that wasn't really there because it was just a bunch of boxes painted green that stuff's going to be added in later. It's going to be a good advert for the game too, you know, because um, people, you know, see the video and think, oh, look at them graphics or whatever. I mean, some of them, in actual fact, we saw a couple of bits they did. It is a, a, a sort of mock-up of the bar inside supposedly the Ruskin Arms. And believe you me, the Ruskin Isles doesn't look anything like that. <laughs> like this, this is more sort of, you know, future or whatever kind of stuff. And uh, it's really, it really looks good. It's very, very strong. I found it better thinking that something was going to be added to our performance later, and, and somebody would be there, and we wouldn't look like a lot of videos unless they're, up, you know, performance ones or of you live, where you're just performing to who? You're just per performing for the camera or whatever, trying to put yourself over or, you know, put a, an audience in your mind. So uh, I found it quite good, actually, you know, it's a different experience. And as well as that, when we looked at just the very rough shots, you think, well, what are they going to put in later? It should be really exciting. Actually, normally, I, I really don't like making videos, I've got to be honest, um, you know, sort of mind the playback doesn't appeal to me at all. But this time, I actually really enjoyed it a lot more because I think because of the whole theme of it, and, uh, and having seen the, the virtual reality f footage before, anyway, from the game, it, you know, I suppose it all made a lot more sense, you know, rather than uh, a direct, some director's idea or whatever, you know, about what, what you're going to do. And uh, it was actually a lot more exciting. The video does, in some ways, act like a preview to the Ed Hunter game. So you get to see lots and lots of uh, different scenes and different characters and also stuff that we've made especially for the video looks so good that we're probably going to put it in the game. Don't look too.